So I gave a talk today on uh, the molecular pathogenesis of myeloma. Uh, what we've done in the past is look at the different stages of disease from MGUS through smoldering myeloma and myeloma, and then onwards to plasma cell leukemia, and how the genetics differ in the different uh, disease time points. Uh, what we found is that uh, early events include the IgH translocations and hyperdiploidy. Uh, these are generally found in every cell uh, in the patient samples. Uh, but as the disease progresses, those cells acquire additional genetic events. Uh, those could be copy number changes, uh, such as deletion of 1P, uh, gain of 1Q, and deletion of 17P. Um, or there could be epigenetic changes. And so this could be hypomethylation of the DNA, uh, which we find happens as the disease progresses from MGUS through to myeloma. Um, we find that uh, myeloma isn't a single disease. Uh, it's kind of divided up into those where we have a translocation, usually involving the IGH locus. Uh, there are five main types of translocation the 414 and the 1114 are the most common of those. Uh, on the other side of that, there are those that don't have the translocations, and those are hyperdiploid cases where you have gains of mostly odd numbered chromosomes. Um, so, when we look at these uh, patient samples uh, with these abnormalities, we're able to stratify them uh, according to risk and prognosis. And what we find is that the 414 translocation and the 1416 and the 1420 are generally adverse events, and patients who have these uh, are associated with a uh, poorer outcome. Uh, on the other hand, though, the hyperdiploids and the T1114s are more neutral uh, and are associated with a better outcome. And the same is true for copy number changes as well. So we see that uh, deletions of 1P, uh, the gene of interest there is CDKN2C, uh, gains of 1Q and deletion of 17P, and the gene of interest there is TP53. Patients who have these abnormalities uh, are generally associated with a poorer outcome as well. And if we look to see uh, how these abnormalities co-segregate, we find that often if a patient has one of these poor prognostic abnormalities, they may have others as well. Uh, and as the number of adverse markers increases, uh, the association with the poorer outcome increases as well. So if you have no adverse markers, you'll do better than if you have one adverse marker or two or three.